Morgan Stanley 18th uh, Annual India Summit. Uh, we are now joined by Samir uh, Baisiwa, the India Pharmaceutical as well as uh, Property Analyst. Uh, Samir, welcome to the show. Thanks so much uh, for joining in. And on a day, I think, uh, after we've seen a week of uh, the pharma stocks really flying around. So uh, let's focus on the stock, really, that uh, that did see a big cut yesterday. That's Sun Pharma. It's been one of the bluest chips. My colleague, uh, Ekta, will join in as well. And she's been telling us over the last few years, it's been a big wealth creator. Now it's corrected a goodish bit from the highs. What's your take on, uh, on Sun Pharma? And uh, what all are you factoring in, in terms of negative news flow? Thank you, Nigel, for taking me on the uh, on this on the show, uh, and good morning to everyone. Uh, can't talk uh, on stock specific, but I think uh, presently, as for the pharma sector is concerned, we are going through some sort of a time correction in terms of companies having to deal with uh, FDA issues and pipelines not re not really firing uh, uh, in 2016. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I think it's just a matter of time. But on a mid year, uh, on on a, on a mid term basis, we are quite constructive on the sector. Okay. Samir, hi, thank you very much for joining in. This is Ekta, I look at the pharmaceutical space here. Uh, wanted your thoughts then about the pricing pressure which a lot of the analysts, a lot of the companies have spoken about quite candidly on their conference calls as well as their earnings this time round. Uh, your sense in terms of how deep the pricing pressure could get in the US markets um, and uh, would that change your forecasts going forward in terms of what the US sales could be for the top pharma companies? Good morning, Ekta. I think the U.S. market in general is a pretty good place to be in for the pharma companies in terms of opportunities that we see on a multi-year basis as we go forward. On pricing specifically, uh, there's been, a, uh, as you well know, uh, has been a fair bit of customer consolidation. So about four players account for about 80% of buying in the U.S. And that's what's leading to some sort of pricing pressure. And this is also uh, linked to the supply uh, of, uh, of, uh, uh, you know, of the manufacturers. So in terms of greater approvals and greater players joining the band. So what we are really building in and what we expect is a mid single digit sort of a price erosion uh, on a multi-year basis, that's for the base business. And then there are some product specific uh, uh, you know, uh, erosion that happens depending upon where the products are in the life cycle. Obviously, the other big issue, and you referred to that fleetingly, is the US FDA issues that a lot of the pharmaceutical companies are suffering from. But uh, if you look at it, just in the past few days, we've received uh, good news saying that there are establishment inspection reports which have been received by companies such as Claris Life, which had observations on a particular plant. We have Granules India, which received an EIR Lupin, where they closed uh, uh, the US FDA inspection successfully on two of their plants. Do you think that Indian pharma companies are now getting it right because of the ever-changing environment of the US FDA and we have possibly turned the corner? Uh, well, uh, you're right in a way that last two years we, see, we saw these companies getting into the problem in terms of a little harsh 483s leading to warning letter. And now we are coming after two years and efforts by these companies, we are coming at the end of this uh, uh, of the cycle and we are seeing more and more plants actually getting remediated and getting out of the FDA issues and we expect this trend to continue. However, uh, not all of them uh, will be clear. Uh, I do think that a couple of them may take longer or may actually get uh, get worse. But net net, I think things will get better from where we are right now. Okay, fair enough. That's a positive outlook there. But uh, would you share that optimism for the domestic market, Samir? Uh, considering that we have the FTC possible ban, it's just a stay order right now, which is giving relief. But something like that to reckon with, including uh, the National List of Essential Medicines, we've seen that impact come through, especially for MNCs this quarter. Uh, your sense in terms of what the industry growth could be for domestic pharma companies in uh, the coming years? And uh, these are the near-term issues and I would say um, if you take, uh, take a step back uh, then we are our average age in India is about 27 28 years um, you know on an average for the entire population and we are per capita of fifteen hundred uh, dollars um, you know so therefore over next several years and I would say a couple of decades as people get older and richer I think a uh, pharma sector is going to be domestic market is going to get better and better as far pharma companies are concerned but addressing a point uh, we do expect a FTC issue 
uh, and some NLEM uh, impact uh, to be felt during this year. So what was earlier 12-13% uh, growth for the domestic market, we do expect this to come down by about a percentage or two uh, in fiscal 17. Okay, Samir, that's about the pharmaceutical sector, which has been a big underperformer. In fact, the pharma index has underperformed the Nifty by nearly 10% since the start of the year. But you also look at property very closely, and all the voices that we've got from the Morgan Stanley conference have indicated an you know, economic growth and acceleration there. Um, do you see a revival in the property market? If yes, with geographies, and therefore, is it time to look at property if someone has a one- to two-year time horizon? Property stocks. We are constructive on the property sector, and uh, we have seen last two quarters some sort of sequential volume growth, and we track uh, the data, housing data from seven metros. So things uh, are getting better, and our outlook for, uh, for a year or two is really 5% uh, or mid-single digit, both volume growth as well as pricing growth. But I'll take a step back and say that, uh, you know, again, this could be a multi-year uh, story in the making. Uh, Indian property stocks are probably most underrepresented in the stock markets versus any other country that you, uh, you look at in, in Asia. Uh, there's some of these fundamental drivers, which is uh, job creation, income growth, urbanization, and family nuclearization. And these trends are going to be there for a period of time. So if India has to do well, property sector has to do well. All right, Samir, one final question then before I let you go. You're talking about being constructive on, uh, on uh, real estate and property going ahead. Uh, just a quick question. How would you play it? Uh, I mean, there was uh, uh, traditionally people should go out there and buy property, but real estate stocks are fairly attractive with the kind of valuations they're trading at. So would you buy stocks instead of uh, property today for all our viewers who are uh, standing by? And also there's so much talk that FSI is going to be increased. Could it lead to a lot of oversupply and then pressure on uh, prices? Well, um, it depends really which market we are talking about. So for most metro markets, we are not looking at uh, at an oversupply sort of a, a sort of situation. Uh, however, NCR sort of stands out, and we think that Noida is definitely oversupplied, and Gurgaon is going through some sort of a price correction. But outside of this, markets are pretty okay. Uh, our, as I said, our outlook uh, for the property prices is not really uh, super. It's just mid-single digit. Uh, but at the same time, for the sector, for the stocks, we are quite constructive. And I think uh, uh, within the sector, what we, what, what we really like are the mid-caps. Okay, so like the mid-cap property names. Thanks, Amir, for taking the time out and joining in and have a great conference. So that's the word from Morgan Stanley saying that they're constructive on pharmaceutical as well as property. On property, it's a multi-year story in the making. But let's